Hey everyone, so I'm just going to show off my complex graphing calculator that I made with Desmos graphing calculator. And it's kind of complicated, but I'd also like to make a video here just to show how it works and everything. But uh, the way it works is, here is the complex plane. So here's the real axis and the imaginary axis. So I can put a point on here. So I have, I have a movable point and like a little line, just for fun. Um, and the function that you use to transform this point, you can call it f of z, or f of any variable, and then you enter what the function is. So there's um, some functions take in one point, but some functions kind of take in two. And I'll introduce you. So the syntax is a little different, because it, again, we're teaching a, a real function calculator how to graph complex functions. So if I do f of z, if I set it to z plus i, so if you just do z plus i, nothing's going to happen. So you have to use a special syntax instead. So uh, the way you do it is there's a function called add. So you go a underscore dd. So the way the add function works is it takes in four numbers. It takes in the real and the imaginary parts of both. So by doing z, this counts for two of them. So now if I wanted to add i to z, I'd have to do a point 0, 1. And then you see it does generate a point that is i above. And you can also add um, 1 to it. So I could add 1, 0, or I can add 1 plus i. So it's, it's a little interesting how it works, but uh, I have coded in some. So if you type in i in replacement of that point, the letter i counts for the point 0, 1. So there's a so this is kind of what the syntax looks like. And then again, I can do another one. So uh, there's another function called divide, so div, which I've uh, custom coded in my function library. So let's say I wanted to divide z by 2. You can't just do z by 2. You can't even do z comma 2. It has to be z comma. Now 2 in complex land is 2 real parts plus 0 imaginaries. So when I do that, then we finally get a point that is indeed uh, halfway uh, from there to the origin. And then if I divide it by like one half, no, that's not correct. Right. <laughs> so uh, one half in complex line is one half comma zero. That's the same as multiplying by two, but of course there's a function to do that. I just wanted to introduce how it all works. Okay, before we get any farther, I'm also going to introduce uh, something I made called the field. So instead of seeing how one point moves around, we can see how multiple points move around. So disable the point and check the box that says field. What this is, is it's a grid of numbers that we can move around and you can see how the grid as a whole behaves. Since I'm multiplying by a real number, then it's just going to scale away from the origin. But well, that behavior is normal. But if we change our function to maybe square, so this is a special function. This one only requires uh, one complex number is its input. So we can square z. Now we can see how f of z equals z squared kind of starts to behave around the origin and around these weird places. There's a lot of curvature here and there's a lot of weird behavior. And yes, i squared is negative 1. Uh, this grid can do a couple cool things. There's a point here to adjust the scale of the grid. And then there's also a slider on the left called num. So you can adjust the slider to change the density of your grid. And then again, the scale works as normal. Oh, and by the way, there's also a point right here in the middle to show you where the middle of this grid goes. The function that you're analyzing has to be called f for this red point here to be mapped. And then the grid, or the field rather, also gets mapped. So the function you're analyzing, you can make all sorts of things. Like if I wanted to do z squared plus z, Again, you have to use a special syntax for that. So you do the square z, but then you, you add z to the square z. So that would look like add z, square z and z. So this is z squared plus z for point, and then I'll also change this to the field. So right now I'm, we are looking at the function z squared plus z. Uh, the function library here is actually kind of large. I've included a bunch of functions because uh, honestly, I kind of, I kind of like to look at a lot of things. I've got a lot of the common ones like log root. I'm going to show how all these work. So let's say you want to do square root of x. So that would be sqrt of z. And yes, there's a plus and minus. Uh, and then if you 
do regular root like this, you can decide you can show what root you want. So I have this set where you can put in any number, any regular number, and it will give you the cube root. So you can put in any number for the right and it will show you what root it is. And yes, it's light, so I'm gonna stop doing that. So if you want to make your own functions, you can absolutely do that. There's a couple tools you need. First of all, you don't have to do this, but the naming convention I'm using is a big capital letter and then the rest um, in subscript. So to get to the subscript, just hit uh, the underscore on your keyboard and you set. So I've got a bunch. I've got natural log, uh, sysx, sine, cosine, all the goods. And you know, let's see, there's a couple more tools here. Rotation, value, and polar. Don't touch this unless you're going to make your own functions. In that case, absolutely mess around with this. R gives the angle theta that it makes with the horizontal. And yes, it if it's in the second quadrant here, it will give it will give the entire angle. The argument is meant to go full circle, so it's not just inverse tangent. And polar is if you want to express a number in polar coordinates. So like the first number is our radius. So let's do square root two. And then the second is our angle, so pi over four. That would be our angle. And let's make this work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be a point. Polar accepts a point. So to make this work, you have to put in a point, which basically means another set of parentheses. But get, getting this out of the way, this is indeed the point. That is square root 2 away from the origin and at an angle of pi over 4. So that's how you use the polar. And the polar can be used uh, to make some pretty cool functions. So like if I do the... Uh, exponentiation function which should look like uh, x z I use the polar to get the effect of rotation so as you go along the real axis the si the scale increases and then as you go around the imaginary your rotation increases and yes e to the i pi is indeed negative one uh, the functions the way it works is it takes the components so if you wanted to make your own functions or if you had a function in terms of the real and the imaginary part, you can put it in here. Uh, that's about it.